Once again, it's on What's Up World is your boy Vic XL, and this is the Ride and Dirty Show. We bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life, giving you beats, rhymes, hip hop, and talk. And you know what? If it's moving, shaking, popping, if you got a story to tell, let the Ride and Dirty Show and your boy Vic XL tell it. One time for my man, the Godfather of Crump, my man Carlos Glover on the check in. Hey man, that dude is one of my mentors who definitely, definitely got me started in the game when it comes to. You know, being serious about this music thing taught me a lot. Um, I might have a chance to get a lot of in-studio experiences with my man, Carlos Glover. Um, man, showed me a lot about the studio, showed me a lot about the movie game. One time for the godfather of Crump, my man, Carlos Glover. Also, one time for my man, KG. My man, KG. Kevin Gordon, out there representing New Power, the middle man. Celtics fan. I don't know why I wanted to add the Celtics fan part, but he's a Celtics fan. One time, my man KG definitely, definitely doing his thing. One of my lifelong homeboys, definitely, definitely strong father, strong entrepreneur. My man KG on the check in. <clears throat> and everybody else, man, on the check in right now. You you got it locked to the Ride and Dirty Show, so we're going to get this thing going like we always do right about this time. And you know, I have to tell y'all all the time the Ride and Dirty Show is proudly, proudly. Brought to you by the good people over at Dr. Juice Can Oh, stop what I'm saying. Stop what I'm saying. I see somebody on the check-in. One time for my man Rush Dog, my man Jay Rush, definitely on the check-in. One time for you love that dude. That's my brother of another mother. Gotta say one time for him. Alright, again, the Ride and Dirty Show is brought to you by the good people over at Dr. Juice Cleanse. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural cleanser. An all-natural cleanser that does the body. It does so many good things for the body, I don't have enough time to tell you. So I'm just going to tell you a few. I'm going to tell you a few. Dr. Juice Cleanse can slow down the aging process. That's right. You know those premature lines and bags and sags in your face? Dr. Juice Cleanse can help eliminate that. Get rid of that. You hear me? Get rid of that. It can do it. Also, Dr. Juice Cleanse promise you that in 10 days, you can lose up to 25 pounds. Now, who don't want to lose 25 pounds in 10 days? Who don't want to lose 25 pounds in, in 50 days? I do. I definitely need to lose 25 pounds. Also, it can help remove the icky, icky mucus and fungi and all the things in your body that you don't want there. Dr. Juice Cleanse can come through clean sweep and get it up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Dr. You know what? I'm about to tell you some more things Dr. Juice Cleanse can do, but you know what? I'm not going to do that because I want you to go to www. DrJuiceCleanse.com, find out all about the product, find out about the great things it can do for your body, and order you some. And tell them the good people at Ryan Dirty Radio sent you, all right? Do that for me. It's 2018. Fine-tune that body of yours, all right? By drinking you some Dr. Juice Cleanse, all right? Just like that, straight like that. All right, today is, today is January 14th, Sunday, January 14th, one day for National MLK Day, Martin Luther the King Holiday is tomorrow, so hopefully a lot of us don't have to go to work tomorrow and we'll enjoy the day. I'm going to like to tell everybody, on Martin Luther King Day, if you can, if you can, don't spend the day doing nothing. Try to spend the day educating. Try to educate on Dr. King's teachings. Educate on what Dr. King stood for. Try to educate on the type of man he was. Um, I know this is a national holiday, but some people still 
a nine agreements with it being a national holiday. So if you can, just take the time. Even if you Google, read something, learn about the man, learn about how great he was and some of the things he's done to uh, make this place a better place. And then your day should be splendid. All right? All right, MLK Day, tomorrow's coming up. Got, and, I'm, you know, I might have a show for y'all tomorrow. I'm not sure. You know, I might be a little lazy. I don't know. But, again, January 15th is MLK birthday, which is tomorrow. And today is the 14th. And let me tell you about birthdays. Celebrity birthdays. Number one, today is Rick the Ruler, the legendary MC Ricky D, a.k.a. Slick Rick, turns 53 years old today. Now, I did not realize Slick Rick was 53, but I, I knew he was a little older than me. But I didn't realize he was 53. So one time for Slick Rick, the ruler, turned 53 years old today. Also, I'd like to say happy birthday to, had to lick my lips, to Ladies Love, Cool James, one LL Cool J. He turns 50 years old today. Now, I'm telling you, when you see pictures of LL Cool J, there's no way you will think that man is 50. Now, I know some plastic surgeons probably had a hand in making him look so youthful. You know, and he said he drank a lot of goddamn water. I don't know. But happy birthday to my man, LL Cool J. He turns the big five old today. Happy birthday to him. Also, happy birthday to world music singer, my man, Yandel. Um, if you're familiar with world music or reggaeton, he was in a group with Wasin and Yandel. He turns 41 years old today. If you don't know him, go Google him. Listen to his music, man. Makes great international music. So one time for Yandel, if I'm saying his name correctly. And last but not least, happy birthday to my man Apollo Creed, aka Carl Withers. Carl Withers turns 70 years young today. Now I did not realize Carl was 70. I did not know a man was 70 years old. But happy birthday to my man Carl Withers. He is 70 years old. If you get a chance. Find any of these people, whether it's Slick Rick, L, Cool J, Yandel, or Carl, on any social media, send them a little message, tell them you say happy birthday from Ryan Dirty, or you heard about their birthday on Ryan Dirty, and um, it's straight like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've talked enough. I was going to get, you know what, I was going to give y'all a little hip-hop news. I might do it at the end of the show. I might do it tomorrow, but I want to get to our guests, because you know the Ryan Dirty Show is not just about music. The Ryan Dirty Show is also about people in the community being entrepreneurs, being movers and shakers, <laughs> creating their own destiny. So with that being said, 2018 is upon us, and right now I have my first director of the year, my man, Mr. Jamie Rose. What's going on, my guy? Hey, thanks for having me on Riding Dirty. Uh, I love your theme, man, theme song. You come out with so much energy. I, I got pumped up while I was sitting here. And I have it on good authority that LL Cool J drinks Dr. Juice cleanse to keep that youthful appearance. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm excited to be on uh, Riding Dirty Radio. Yeah. All right, so Jamie, I want to get right into this thing because we only got a thirty-minute show, man. I got so many questions to ask you, so I want to—I just want to—I want to dive right into it. Let the world know where Jamie Rhodes is from. Hello, you, you there with me, Jamie? You got me. Oh uh, yeah, what was that question again? All right, let the world yeah, know. Uh, I didn't quite catch that. All right, let the world know. Where Jamie Rhodes is from. I want to, we got 30 minutes. I got to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right on. Uh, I operate out of uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. My hometown is a little town outside Louisville, Kentucky, Charleston, Indiana. But uh, my hometown is Indianapolis, and that's where I, I do my, most of my business from. But also, I'm in uh, Atlanta uh, quite often as well. Okay. So. I'm not even going to beat you over the head with the the typical questions because I want to get into this movie. But I do want to ask, at what point in your life did you want to become a director? Uh, good question. You know, I, I, primarily I'm a writer. I, I think all good projects start with the writer. And uh, the directors bring their thing to life. So for me, uh, I think I really got into the directing thing probably when I did my first short film, which was about about 12 years ago now. 
12, 13 years ago. That's when I said, you know, I, I want to do some uh, directing. So I directed a short film called Sebastian's Ten. It's uh, PEN, available on YouTube. That was in uh, like four film festivals once I got it done. So I was really excited about that. And uh, so that's what led me to directing Night of the Unspeakable as well. Uh, so that's how I feel. So for my cinematic ventures, I think I'll be behind the camera a lot of the times. You know, also I do uh, plays. I'm a playwright as well. Now my plays, I have uh, different directors. I, I don't direct the plays. I, I usually just hand it over and let someone else direct that. But that's so about 12 or 13 years ago to answer your question, Ben. So when you done that first piece, and you said the name of that first piece was what again? It's uh, Sebastian's Pen, P-E-N, Sebastian's Pen. And uh, it's available on YouTube. It's a 25-minute short. It's, uh, it's like an episode of The Twilight Zone. So, uh, but it takes on uh, like child pornography and the Internet. So it's a serious story and theme, but it's done in a very entertainment entertaining way that you don't even realize you're really looking at something as heavy and as deep as what it turns out to be. So, uh, but it's called Sebastian's Pen, available on YouTube. And let me give you an idea of my writing, directing style. That was the first thing that I did. It was accepted at film festivals in San Francisco, North Carolina, and Martha's Vineyard, and also at the London Underground Film Festival in the UK. So that's, that was my first entry into, uh, getting the idea of doing a feature film project. Um, how long did it take you to work on that project? Uh, the, the film, the short film, I probably shot that in about two days. Uh, but, you know, I had to plan it out. I'm a, I, I believe in uh, having, the, you know, developing and pre-production. I, I like to try to do as much as I can before you go to production. You want to be as organized as you can, and then we can keep a nice, tight shoot and not let things get out of hand and stay on your deadline and stay on task. So it took about two days to shoot it. Then I had to get it edited for about another oh, 45 days or so. Then I, after that, I started getting it out into the uh, the media where uh, we watched it take different film festivals and, you know, submitted to quite a few and, and got uh, accepted at four. I didn't know anybody from a can of paint. They didn't know my work, so it got in on its own merits. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then they gave me a good introduction in terms of how to make movies and other sort of thing, too. All right. Um, who are some of the inspirations that made you want to get into film and writing? Uh, good question. Uh, going back in the day, Melvin and their peoples, uh, there's a movie called Sweet Ass, Sweet Backs, Badass Song. <laughs> That, that movie there started, started the uh, black exploitation period movies. And uh, you had a, a black protagonist who was a hero that uh, beat the man, so to speak, as you could, they would say back in those days. So uh, Melville Van Peoples definitely kind of inspired me. And then I, I like filmmaking in, uh, in general. Somebody like a Spike Lee that has the audacity to get out and do the independent film thing and is very creative and has done some really important films. Uh, I like entertaining things. I like uh, Steven Spielberg. and I like just good movies, you know, done by all kinds of people. Um, but, you know, I think those are the things that kind of trigger my mind. You know, I like, uh, you know, various directors, uh, Sam Peck and Paul and, and um, uh yeah, just a just a host of just a host of people that I've watched over the years, and uh, you know actors that I've been motivated by, and you know I've always kind of like independent films and foreign films as well too. So uh, I, I, I'm just a film person. I'm kind of a film geek. I like all kinds of movies, especially you know I just like them to be done right, but I also like them to be inclusive with people like us also portrayed in the movies as well. So I believe in diversity in my casting and, and in my movie. Just like Night of the Unspeakable, you know, there's diversity in that. Sebastian's Pen, you're going to see a little diversity in that. And anything that I do is going to be diverse because, you know, Big XL, we do not live in an all-black world, and we certainly do not live in an all-white world, despite the person that's in the White House right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, diversity is king with me.
Amen to that, Jamie. Amen to that. Um, I gotta ask. Um, what was the last movie? <laughs> what was the last movie you checked out? You you watched? I just went to see um, Proud Mary this Friday, and uh, that stars Taraji P Henson. So I want to get out and support her. So that was the last movie that I seen. Um, when it was just past Friday. I, I, so. It's, Mm-hmm. I gotta ask, how is that movie? I'm, I plan on going to see it tomorrow. One of my um, one of my yearly rituals on Martin Luther King Day is to go out and support a, a movie with either an African American cast or an African American star. And um, each year I'm actually able to go out and spend my money and find one. And Proud Mary is what I was going to see tomorrow. Um, how is that? Uh, go see it because uh, it's like Taraji P. Henson stars in it, but you got Danny Glover. So it's it's uh, it's a very diverse cla- ca- uh, cast, but you know a lot of black folks, of course, in that movie. Uh, it's got a lot of action in there. Uh, Taraji does a, a really good job, and also the action. You know, it's a, basically it's an action type of movie, and they do a really good job conveying that. Uh, it's it's ninety minutes or so, so it's really tight. So it it comes on. Like a like a job or not, and uh, it kind of ends like that too. So a lot of action, and you know, so you know, seeing Danny Glover, haven't seen him in a movie in a while. I know he's been in movies, I just haven't maybe called him any of them in a, in a while. But uh, and, and Taraji is always good to see her, and she also produced that movie. Ooh. So I don't, I'm not sure who directed it or anything, but Taraji P Henson uh, uh, produced it as well. So go out, definitely go out, check it out. You know, that's what I want to do. I want to go out and, you know, support our, our brothers and our sisters and, and uh, you know, so we can get more movies out there. That's what's up. So now, on to your movie, Night of the Unspeakable, a hip-hop supernatural yeah. thriller. First of all, I've never heard of a hip-hop supernatural thriller. So let's get into the meat of, <laughs> of Night of the Unspeakable. Set the scene for us. Well, it all takes place in a uh, rehearsal studio, recording studio. So just like a typical horror movie, you got one place where everything happens. That's not the haunted house, but it is the haunted house. So everything happens within the confines of this studio. So you've got uh, four acts that are coming there, and what happens is one of them secretly is in charge of uh, being the keeper of a couple of demons. She carries them in a gourd that's their holding cell. Somebody originally opens that gourd and the demons get out. And from that standpoint, that's when literally all hell breaks out. So the demons are very seductive and sensual, so they seduce their victims and then they slay them. So it's, uh, it's the first 20 minutes of a big XL is like hip hop uh, in Atlanta or LA, because the first 20 minutes, I get into the character development and not just have people out there. I want the audience to either like the person or not like the person, but I want them to have an opinion on them and have enough information where they can have an opinion on them. So, and then we get into the horror and you're also going to get music where they're in the uh, recording studios and the, uh, the, the keeper of the, the demons is a spoken word artist, so she does a lot of her thing. You know, in the movie, actually, I, I shot this movie before uh, Empire came out, and uh, this TV show Empire. So Empire came out; it shows people performing maybe most of the songs or all, and that's what I did uh, with this movie here. Even though you know it took a while to edit it, since it's an independent film, you know, budgets can be tight, and uh, it took a while to bring it to the uh, public view, viewing audience. But you know, it's kind of it's kind of like that in, in a sense. Um, but again, it is a it is a horror movie, and uh, it can be. Some people find it to be kind of scary, but uh, it, it's got that element to it. All right. Um. What what made you choose hip hop as a back- backdrop? Well, I love hip hop music for one thing, and I kind of wanted to merge the two. You know, I'm like, you know, usually you see something going on and. And I tell them maybe European Americans, they're at a summer camp and all that sort of thing. So I'm like, what happens if we make it more more urban, you know, put some flavor to it? And that's what I wanted to do with this with this movie. We just add a little uh, urban flavor to it and 
and get it out there and have people of color, uh, you know, primarily in the lead roles. So uh, that was the idea, and I was able to do that. All right. Um, how hard was it choosing your cast? Um, I had some good people working with me to help select the cast people. Uh, my, I should say my actors. So I had like a, a person uh, that that kind of worked on that for me, and uh, you know she did a good job. Because actually the movie it features a, 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 a really good actor that's going to be on uh, the Pains, the reemergence of the Pain show on the Oprah Winfrey Network this Tuesday. Um, named Anthony Dawson. He's from Indianapolis. So he was in there. So uh, her name is Jessica. And uh, forgive me, Jessica, I can't think of his last name right now. But uh, she she reached out to, a, you know, quite a few of these actors, and a few of them might have had uh, auditions. But uh, some of them, uh, a lot, uh, quite a few of them I kind of was already familiar with. So because I've been familiar with, I figured, hey, but this is a role that I think this person can handle. And... Uh, so, therefore, you know, I reached out to them, and there's a few that, you know, maybe we had to do some audition for. It just, it's like this big Excel. If you've got a big budget and all this, you're going to be able to have your greater selection of maybe actors and all this sort of thing. But when you try to do things for, on a, with an independent film on a lower budget, sometimes you're looking for people that have just as much enthusiasm as, as you have, as one of your primary indicators for hiring this person. You know, so if I got somebody who, you know, has, has talent but is also very, very passionate, I'm going to really want that person because it's not like we're paying them hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. So if you're doing it just for the money, this is probably not the business for you because if you're doing it the same way with hip-hop and people trying to get into the music world, it's like if you're doing it just for the riches of it, that may not happen for you, but if you do it because you got the talent and you want to get it out there, then anything is possible. So enthusiasm goes a long way with me, and uh, that's how I, uh, you know, that's how I look at it. All right. Um, did you start? Did you play any role in the movie, or did you choose not to cast yourself? This time I did not cast myself. I actually did cast myself in Sebastian's Ten. I played the role of a police officer in that movie. And if you, in the stream and now, you can stream it on YouTube. Anybody can. Um, but in this one here, no, I just stayed behind the camera and uh, and out of the way. Um, but yeah, that's that's interesting because I, I did think about doing a little cameo. Now, if I do my follow-up movie, because there is a sequel that is that I'm working on now for. Uh, Night of the Unspeakable, and it's Night of the Unspeakable 2, or No 2 2, Night of the Unthinkable. So it's going to really ratchet everything up. So I might do a little cameo in that one. You know, Vic Excel, I'll let you know if I do, man, so you can really come and check me out. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I know I asked you in Messenger about the music uh, for the movie. Um, How did you go about selecting music for it? Uh, well, uh, this is a story. I had a, one song that I used that's called Hollow Back, and uh, it was done by a group called Four Way, you know, years ago in Indianapolis. It kind of broke out a little bit locally and maybe regionally. You know, that's a time when we still had a lot of prominent girl groups. We don't have girl groups so much anymore. So I kind of wanted to do something and bring that back, at least in a movie. Uh, nothing against rappers and hip-hop. I love it. And the rappers, they bring a flavor, but, you know, we don't really have those good girl groups anymore, and we don't really have the good guy groups anymore, we, and the bands are kind of going away. But I wanted to kind of uh, feature that, so, you know, I, I reached out to some local artists, and since it's a local movie, it's local artists in terms of uh, uh, actors, but also musicians. So uh, I reached out to a gentleman also named uh, Ray E, and uh, Ray E, been, you know, he's been in the business for a while, and uh, he was very instrumental in, in uh, introducing me to other people uh, like uh, E-Rock and also uh, had music that was produced by Travis Polkut, uh Moore. So, uh, but I just wanted to reach out to the local, you know, people in the Indianapolis area and, uh, you know, get them, get them on board and try to use this as also a vehicle to get their music out there. 
Okay, that's definitely, definitely. What's up? Um, how hard was it hard finding the location for the film? Uh, if it, if it, I was very fortunate in, with that because it wasn't. You know, I was able to go in and, and plus, you know, if you see the movie, you know, uh, Vic is streaming on Amazon Prime. Again, Night of the Unspeakable, streaming on Amazon Prime, and it's also available on DVD through uh, Amazon. But uh, what, if you look at the movie, they're getting all kinds of publicity in the movie. <laughs> so the studio, uh, the name of the studio is all, it's all imprinted there. So I, I would like to think that uh, they, got, they got their money's worth. So from that standpoint, it, it really wasn't easy. Once I, uh, wasn't hard once I went in, you know, talked to them, explained the concept to them. Uh, yeah, and they enjoyed it too. I think they they really gave us some props for you know working in there and being professional. And also too, I just want to say the associate producer that helped me get the casting. Her name is Jessica Lawson. So I wanted to go back and say Jessica Lawson. Shout out to her because she really brought some really. I, I felt good, talented actors to me and helped me out a lot in that regard. But uh, that's it in a nutshell in terms of that question there, okay? Okay. Real quick, we've got about four minutes left in the show. Um, i got to ask, what, what, what advice would you give to someone who wants to um, get into the directing business? Someone who might want to do shorts for YouTube or shorts to potentially go to DVD or or just full-length movies? What would be your advice to that? Good question. I think from a technical skill standpoint is uh, maybe do a short, just to learn the techniques and to learn how to do the uh, development, pre-production, uh, production, post-production post of the project. Beyond that, I would not consider just doing short film at the short film at the short film. You know, I think that... Uh, there are plenty of outlets now, and they're looking for feature films. So I think the first one is probably good to kind of cut your teeth on and get an idea of how it works. And then I would say, my, my, what I would just recommend is then, okay, you do a feature. And a lot of times folks don't realize it, but a feature needs to be at least 73 minutes, you know, in that neighborhood. So sometimes people are making movies for 45 minutes, pardon me, or 50 minutes, and it's just not long enough. And it's too long to be a short. So you want to keep your shorts like under 30 minutes for sure, you know, or shorter, you know, under 30. And you want to get your features to uh, be uh, at least 73 minutes or more. If you don't do that, you, there's other outlets now for those type of movies that are, that are timed in such a way. But in terms of being able to get the distributor, that's what you want. And I was very fortunate with that. Another thing, too, you know, that I... I, I you know, make sure you have good camera equipment and good sound equipment as best that you can have, as best as you can afford. So my film, I shot it with a 90 camera, seconds. which is a red camera, and it looks really good. So now you have 4K TVs and 4K other technology. So I kind of like got ahead of the curve when it came to the technology in terms of what I use to shoot the film with. So visually, it looks really nice. Um, Sound-wise, it came out well. But I had to take out certain music and replace certain music, you know, in the film. And that's the thing, too, I would say with filmmakers. Make sure you got all, everything from the people that you get in. 60 make sure seconds. Signed and, you know, from, from that standpoint, and I kind of do it on a handshake in terms of, um, you know, because of the legal, it's a business, it's a job. And, and, and I think that's the thing, too, is people have to realize filmmaking is a business if you're doing it and trying to get it distributed. So you want to make sure you have your contracts in place, but also make sure you have your music in place. And I had music, but I had people that were kind of like dragging their feet, signing things, even though, you know, we had worked out certain things. It was just, they just wasn't, you know, maybe they was recording. I don't know. So I had to take music out, put other music in. So I would say, you know, make sure you have all that done before you go into the editing process. So which that slowed me down. But, um, you know, I, I came across, like I said, a lot of good musicians, a lot of good music, and there's even more out there. You know, they've got in the seconds. So there's a lot of good artists down there. In my next film, I'm going to shoot it actually in the ATL. That's what's up. Well, look, definitely when you come to the ATL to shoot that film, look me up. If nothing else, I just want to come out and hang on the set. Or, you know, you might have a little cameo for you, but I don't know. No, I'm just playing. But next, when you come to the hey. No, 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 I will. 
I will do that. <laughs> Look, hey, I will definitely come hang yeah. out. I will definitely come hang out, and I would love to help you with the music. Um, real quick before we wrap this thing up, let people know how to either get their hands on or stream or watch Night of the Unspeakable. Okay, uh, Amazon Prime. If you have that, just go do it. If you don't have it, go to Amazon and, and uh, put in Night of the Unspeakable. Tops up. You can rent it for uh, two ninety nine uh, or three ninety nine in uh, high definition. It's also available on DVD. Uh, I have a uh, website. It's called Two well, Second uh, Trade Win dot com. Second tweet the number two N D trade P R A D E W I N D dot com. And you can get a lot of my information, find out more about my plays, my, my novels, my short film, all that sort of thing. Also on Instagram, if you'd like to follow me, uh, Instagram at JR Silk Seven and Twitter, Jamie Rose at two tradewind dot Jamie. Um, but that's how you can get a hold of me. If you go to the website, you can get to the movie. Also, we have a Facebook page, No2, N-O-T-U, for Night of the Unspeakable. And you can get, the, get to the movie through that uh, resource as well. All right, Jamie, check this out. First of all, congratulations on your movie. I'm definitely about to, Thank stream, you. I'm about to stream this thing. I'm sitting here looking at Amazon right now. I'm going to try to stream it before I go to sleep. Um, but before we end this thing, I got two songs from the movie. I got Champagne and Feel No Pain. Let's give them one of these people and let us know who the artists are. Okay, uh, the artist is, uh, this is, both of those joints are from Ray E, who is a uh, local Indianapolis musician and, uh, and recording star. All right, we're going we're gonna to end the show with Feel No Pain.
right, y'all. Your boy PKCL, Ryan Dirty Show. We'll be back sooner than later. We out. Peace.